Hi everyone, my name is Becca, and this orange kitty over here who is such a troublemaker is Andy. So I'm just carrying him right now because if I don't, then he's gonna start knocking things over as I try to film. Anyway, so today I'm gonna be showing you guys all the plant pots in my collection. So this is my long awaited plant pot tour video. I'm gonna try to talk about where I get some of these plant pots. So um, I would say a lot of these pots I get from places like HomeSense or Winners, which I guess is kind of like the um, Target equivalent here in Canada. And then some of them are also from Ceramicis, so they're a little bit more one-of-a-kind, they're a little bit more limited edition because they're all handmade and they tend to be a little bit pricier as well. But I see these pieces more as like, you know, like little sculptures, little pieces of art that can really complement my collection. I do feel like collecting pots and um, beautiful things like that is another fun part of this hobby. It's not just about collecting plants, it's also about finding the best way to display your plants so that you can really bring out the beauty in the plant. But yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Right, Andy? I think we're ready to start the video? All right, so <laughs> we're gonna start the tour. Let's go. Did you start, did you hit record? Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So let's start with this one. So this planter is from Simon's. Um, it's a department store. I think it's based in Quebec. But yeah, so I'm having it hold the Hoya Linares here because the Hoya Linares, it's, as you can see, it can like tip over like this. So I find a planter that has a wide base like this just helps keep it a little bit more stable. It does need to be watered though. I think I can see that. Oh. So this is my Manjula Pothos that I have climbing up a pole. It's in a longer, deeper planter like this one. And this one is one of my handmade, not like I didn't make it, but this one is from Tree to Sea. So it is a handmade planter. And I find that it just fits it nice and perfectly. Ta-da! And then over here, oops. So this is the Anthurium. So another one of my trailing pendant plants. It's in a planter from Rain Ceramics. I'm just gonna take that out so you guys can Get a better look at it there we go so just like that so that's what it looks like so it's a type of i don't think this was meant to be a planter it was originally made as a vase but i see it more as like a pedestal planter which is really nice for having your hanging plants um, so that everything just like falls down nicely like that and then back there is just a glass vase i don't really have that in a planter because it's all the way back there so it's kind of nice and tucked away and hidden so I don't think it's really necessary to worry about a planter. This one here, I don't remember where I got this. I think I got this from a department store but again it's another one of those pedestal planters so pedestal planters are just really nice and they help to literally elevate your plant and uh, provide a little bit more height variation onto your plant shelf. This one here is a favorite of mine, so another pedestal planter. I think there's a theme going on here. I seem to really like the pedestal planters. So this is meant to be like, uh, I guess like a drip tray, but not quite a tray, but you could also use this as its own cash pot. Um, I have my anthurium in here, and this one is from Clay Ceramics. So we're just gonna pop that in there. I have a smaller version of that, which is what I have my white princess potted into. So a smaller version of that tray, or that planter. Um, I have the princess in some ponds, so it's in semi hydro at the moment. So what I've done is I've just used old soup takeout containers and I kind of just cut them and made my own little reservoir there. And it fits perfectly into that planter. Oh, okay, so this is a terrazzo planter. This is from Chapters Indigo, so it's a bookstore here in Canada. So I'll just have you guys take a good look at that. Right there. This one is... This one's a propagation base, I think, or just a regular base. Oh, wow, look at that root. Do you see that root? Oh, that's a nice juicy root. But yeah, so this one is just from Ikea. 
So it comes with a gold lid that has a hole in the middle and I think the original intention for this is for a flower vase. So the hole in the middle kind of just like holds the flowers in place but I took that gold bit out and just have my anthurium potted in here. And the anthurium is potted directly in some moss and some leca in the bottom. Um, I don't know why I put leca. I think I put leca there so that the moss can stay moist for a little bit longer. So in a way the leca acts as its own reservoir and it keeps the moss moist. And then here, I think this is just a regular white plant pot that I got from a nursery back in Victoria. So nothing really to say about that. Yeah, just a regular white plant pot in an old bubble tea cup. <laughs> and then I put saran wrap over the plants that I have in moss just because I keep everything in room humidity. So having some saran wrap over that just helps keep it moist for a little bit longer so I don't have to constantly water them. So this one is a cute little planter from Mr. Billy Potter. I think they're based in Australia and I think that's real gold right there. So there you go. This is a syningia that is currently dormant so it's not growing anything right now but when it does grow it's very cute and very fuzzy. I think this one is from Superstore. So Superstore is a grocery chain here in Canada. So this is meant to be a drinking cup, but I find that it just looks really cute on the shelf. And I just have like a little plastic shot glass in there um, for my Hoya. Another random one from a random home goods store back in Victoria. So just have that there. And then I have it raised with a, a glass bowl. Um, I have my water propagations here. So this is, these are philodendron varicosum cuttings that I have in a vase, and the vase is from Ikea. So Ikea has a lot of good stuff, so they're worth checking out every now and then. And this one, so this is my philodendron gloriosum, and I have it in a clear rectangular planter here because it's a crawler. So I like having clear vessels because I can, I can monitor the roots very well with the clear planters. Um, I did try to look for one that has drainage holes, so this one does have drainage holes. This was meant to be a window box planter, which is why it has these things, because there are mounts to help you attach it to a window, but I don't want to put this on a window just because I don't think the mount would be able to support the weight. But these ones are actually just from Amazon. They can vary in price, so the price does fluctuate a little bit. So just try your best to wait for a sale before you buy one of these because they can be very expensive as well. And then here, this was meant to be a drinking cup. So this is from Amy Ceramics in Vancouver, I believe. So I bought this from her second sale because I think there's a small crack at the bottom there. So it was no longer food grade, but I, I wasn't really intending to use it for food anyway. I wanted to use it for a plant pot. So thankfully the three inch um, nursery pot fits perfectly in there. Here's another one. So this one is also from Clay Ceramics, the same person that made these um, pedestal planters that I showed earlier. So I have another clear cup in there and I use them as nursery pods. So I just cut little slits at the bottom, but yeah, now I have that in there. Okay, so the little feet are very cute. <laughs> so this one's also by Clay Ceramics. So it's meant to be a hanging planter, but I don't really hang my planters. Um, I just don't want to make holes on the walls or sometimes I use command hooks, but even then, like, I don't like, I don't like resting the edges against the walls because I worry that that might ruin the paint. But yeah, another one by Clay Ceramics. I would say Clay, Clay Ceramics is probably one of my favorite ceramicists. The quality is just really, really good and um, the craftsmanship is really nice as well. And the colors and the glaze is just, just everything about it is very pretty. Um, this one here is from Han Potts, another ceramicist in Vancouver. It came with a saucer, but unfortunately the saucer broke when I shipped it to my parents' house a few months ago. So yeah, but I just like how chubby and how smooth it is. I like touching it. It's so smooth. <laughs> um, okay, and then this one is a little terrarium. It's a glass cloche. I think this one was just from Amazon. I can't actually remember. But these, these types of terrariums I find are not very easy to find. And when you do find them, they're not very cheap either. They're a little bit expensive. So yeah, we're just gonna keep it that way. So this is another one by Rain Ceramics. So this one unfortunately shattered during shipment. Um, so I kind of just like super glued it together. 
<laughs> it would be nice if I could learn to do that Japanese art of putting ceramics together using like gold or whatever and then it just adds to the character of it but I don't know how to do that so I just use super glue I think it's still pretty cute yeah it has these cute little handles over there that kind of look like ears because it's got a little face there so these look like little ears and it's also raised so if I ever want to put another hanging plant I think this would be nice for hanging plants but right now I just have my ring of fire in there oh this new leaf is very pretty just some more crawlers in the clear planters from Amazon. Just like that, so you can really see the roots there. And same for the um, mame over here. And then over here is another one of my gloriosums, but I have it in semi hydro, so it's growing in Lekka, which means that there should be no drainage holes in the bottom and again with my preference for having clear containers I just bought a fridge container so this is meant to go in your fridge but I just used it for my plants instead and I top dress it with moss so that it stays nice and moist around the stem and that just helps to encourage the roots to pop out and then grow into the substrate because if I didn't have any moss there um, with Lekka being so porous, it can dry out very quickly along the surface and then you're gonna struggle to have your roots grow. Alright, this one here is a cute little snail planter that doesn't really go with the rest of my decor because as you guys can see, I tend to go for a lot of like neutral, beige, like sandy buff colors or even like wooden colors like this. Um, but this one has a pop of blue, which does match our wall, <laughs> so I guess in a way. Um, kind of fits but this was from my sister I don't have a plant in it right now I don't even have a nursery pot that fits although I think a plastic solo cup would probably fit in here but I just don't have a plant right now like I don't have a spare plant that could go into this pot right now so yeah but I just wanted to talk about that because this is a little special because it was a gift um, this one <laughs> this is actually so sad <laughs> so this is a little cutting from my Hoya Lacunosa mint coin and it was looking super thirsty so I just have it in some water there. <laughs> I don't even know if that's gonna work but it's it's still green it's still alive um, yeah I just wanted to point this out in case you guys are wondering what the heck is that but yeah we're just gonna leave it this is actually meant to be a candle holder so this is where the candle is supposed to go but I find that this is actually really nice as a plant stand or plant pedestal so for example you know, if I really wanted to, I could set this over top of this and it could like raise it up as well. So if I had a plant that was sitting in the back, for example, then that could just, you know, raise it up so that it's still visible from the front. But yeah, we've got little Groot there. Uh, my husband gave it to me. When did you give this to me? I don't remember. Years ago, many years ago. <laughs> Okay, um, this one was just from HomeSense, so again, it's like our version of Target here in Canada, so... Whoa, I was not expecting that. Holy moly, okay. <laughs> I guess I need to repot this. <laughs> But this is in ponds, so this pot has no drainage, so pots that don't have drainage make really good um, reservoir pots, I guess, as you guys can tell, but that was a little embarrassing. Yeah, I definitely need to repot this one soon, but I kind of don't want to because those roots scare me. Um, over here, this one is from Ikea again. So again, you know, Ikea has got a bunch of cute stuff and I find that they tend to refresh their stuff pretty regularly. So yeah, this one's another plant that I have in pond, also with a reservoir in there. I just have to make sure that I refill the re reservoir because this is a opaque container, so I can't tell right away how much water is left in there so every week like once a week or so I just take this out and I just check to make sure that there's still water in there but yeah this is um Ikea so just putting that back okay we're gonna put everything back now okay well, I guess I can talk about this real quick so this is a planter slash plant stand also from HomeSense and I recently repotted this epipremnum I was thinking about giving it to my younger sister when she came over last night but I totally forgot um, 
right now I don't have it in a clear nursery pot. Instead, I have it in this felt bag from Grow Thickly. So this was a gift from Grow Thickly. So I'm still trialing it. I'm still trying it out. So I can't really say too much about how much I like this pot yet, but it does seem pretty promising. So you just treat it like a nursery pot. Um, you don't really lose any soil when you water because there are no drainage holes. Instead, because it's such a porous material, por porous material the water just flows right through and you still get really good aeration it's kind of like a nursery pot alternative yeah. <laughs> okay okay um this is my most recent addition to the collection so this is from mipa's pots and plants i think she's based in la this is from her second sale because again there's a small crack there so little hack is if you want to get these one-of-a-kind pieces for a cheaper price just check the second section so all of the the sale sections um but yeah i don't really know what kind of plant i want in this pot yet because it's such a small and short planter um i think i might i don't want to plant directly into it either, although I could because the inside is glazed, but I think what I'm going to do is if I have an extra um, solo cup or soup container, I might try and cut my own nursery pot and poke some holes down the bottom and then I might plant something in here. I'm thinking maybe a type of codex plant, so it's like a little potato that just sits in there with like a little tendril falling out. I think that would be really cute. But yeah, this is just from Mipa's Pots and Plants. I'm super happy I was finally able to get a plant from her. The last restock she had, I totally missed it because I was washing rice, so I missed it by five minutes. <laughs> Damn rice! <laughs> but the rice was delicious. Um, this one is the Alocasia Frydeck, and I have it in this planter. I got this from a home goods store back in Victoria. I think it was called Paboom. If you're a Victoria local, um, check them out. But yeah, this, I just like it because it looks like, I don't know, it just looks chubby. It's pretty cute. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the fried egg. So this is a soup container and I just poked holes in it and I have some leka in the bottom because I actually treat this kind of almost like a semi-hydro setup but not really because it is soil. So it's basically just leka, some sphagnum moss, and some soil because I find that alocasias really like to stay moist. They don't like drying out. So having that leka layer in the bottom just keeps the substrate from getting too waterlogged but still keeps it evenly moist as well so then your alocasias don't exhibit too much stress but yeah so that's it for that and then moving on over here on the cat tree so this is another recent addition this is another planter from tree to sea so super cute i'm just gonna rotate it yeah so i really like the drippy details on the glaze there and just the overall palette and like the nice bubbly curvy shape <laughs> is another thing that I liked from this planter. So it's a really tall planter so um, yeah I just have it, that's why I have my Soderoi that I repotted in my last video, I have it in this planter instead. And um, I find that when you have plants that are tall like this, it's nice to have them in a taller planter as well because if they ever accidentally tip over, um, there is some some height in the planter to kind of prevent them from fully tipping over if that makes sense so yeah i try my best to choose cute planters that are also functional but also make sense for the plant for the way the plant grows and um, just like where the weight distribution of the plant is so i think that's it for that these two i don't really have too much to say about them because they're very generic planters i think this is still from chapters um, the bookstore that i was talking about earlier and then this is just from a hardware store so it's just a very regular plain planter um yeah yeah that's it for that okay and then over here with my floridas <laughs> so this is the florida ghost uh, this one is also in another soup container. Uh, yeah, so I repotted this in an earlier video as well, but it's also in another rain ceramics planter. But isn't this super cute? It's got like little hands and little feet and a little face. And I think this is, um, I think they were calling it like a marshmallow glaze because it kind of looks like s'mores, like toasted marshmallows, which I think is super cute. I, like, man, I just love that. It's like 3D, 3D texture. So cute. And then... This is the Florida Beauty. Oh, still a young plant. Um, same pedestal planter that I showed you guys earlier, also from Chapters Indigo. Uh, as this plant grows, I'll obviously have to extend the moss pole and then I might have to switch out the pot because 
it might get a little bit too top heavy for a pedestal planter like this so I might have to switch it to a planter that either has a wider base or maybe has a deeper you know has more depth to it so that way it's not too too top heavy but as it is right now it should be fine in this planter so we're just gonna pop it back in there okay so that's it for this part of the house let's move on move on to the kitchen so I have a lot of favorite ceramics, so this is another one from Rain Ceramics. This one did come with its own little saucer, but the saucer wasn't super cute. I like it just for the pot itself. Um, this one is a little bit too short for your standard nursery pot. I mean, you could pot directly into it because a lot of these planters do come with drainage holes, as you can see. But again, I don't like potting directly into my pots because I like being able to switch things up a bit. You know, if I feel like, oh, this, as the plant grows, oh, now it would look cute in a different planter. It's a lot easier to just take it out like this and then move it to a different planter. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. And this clear trellis is from Propagation Diaries. I think I get a lot of questions about my clear trellises. So this is just made from acrylic. And there we go. Um, this is a Propagation test tube. I'm trying to remember who I got this from. Shoot, I can't remember. You know what, I'll just put like, I'll look it up and then I'll put a little blurb at the bottom there. But yeah, it's just for propagations. I have this attached using a command strip, so that way I don't have to like drill into the backsplash of our kitchen here, so I can just like easily take it out like this and it'll come right off. But I just like the brass holder there. I really love this one. So this is super cute. This is from Aura Clay and I think they are based in Thailand. So I think this one's actually made out of porcelain instead of, uh, you know, clay like this. I don't actually know what the difference is. Is there a difference between porcelain and regular clay? But whatever. But yeah, very cute. Super cute. Cute little face. Cute little tiny feet. And I really like how the 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 edge of the pot here is lined with these cute little flowers although when i water it it does tend to collect water or when i repot it tends to collect soil so i have to like use some air to blow it out of these little crevices there but i have my hoya in here and i think it's very cute how when this hoya is nice and sun stressed it's very pink and it kind of just like complements the cute pink cheeks so cute <laughs> okay let me put that back um another one a tiny planter here. This one is from Annie's Potteries, who I think is based in New York, so I bought this one off Etsy. Um, this one is a two-inch planter with, again, drainage holes, but I don't like potting into it. So I just use these plastic shot glasses that I save from all of my plant orders. <laughs> Because I, I don't think these ones are very easy to find actually. These clear shot glasses, they're not very easy to find. So every time I order a Hoya and it comes in one, I just save it um, specifically so I can pot them into these uh, two inch planters. Okay, so that's it for the windowsill. Up here, um, oh, this is from Aura Clay too. This was a little freebie when I ordered my little planters. It's so cute. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it kind of reminds me of like Studio Ghibli characters. Very adorable. Uh, this one is meant to be a drinking cup, but I'm using it for a plant. So this one is from Jeje Things on Instagram. Like that's such a cute base. It's like a little flower and I like the handle. It looks like a donut. <laughs> And I just like the um, the drawings on it too. I don't know, there's just something about it that is just so so cute and cozy to me. And it looks like crayon marks. I don't know if they actually drew that on with crayon, but yeah, it's cute. I think I think my husband said that it reminded him of um, what did you say? Like like teachers? <laughs> like when you bring a mug for your teacher when you're in, in elementary school or something. Okay. Uh yeah, I think I've already talked about this one. So this is just a glass vessel from Ikea. So this is just a regular vase and I think the intention is to have flowers in it. But what I've discovered is that these plastic shot glasses actually fit into the brim perfectly. And if you fill it up with water, you can actually use it in a semi-hydro capacity. So that's what I'm doing right now. The only downside is because it's a clear vessel, algae tends to build up. So every now and then I empty the water and I clean out the inside of this vase so that the algae doesn't build up too much, but it kind of is building up 
regardless so <laughs> I might have to fix that but right now I just did that because I'm propagating these cuttings um, and once these cuttings are well rooted I am going to move them into some soil but yeah that's um, just some more like you know some mint coin cuttings and then here is a 2.5 inch pedestal planter that I got from Vendula Farms and I have another one of those tiny shot glasses in here so I find Hoyas the root systems are pretty small for the size of the plant and they do like being somewhat root bound so they can actually stay in these tiny um, shot glasses for a very long time so that's why I have a lot of these smaller planters specifically for the Hoyas oh I'm too short to reach that one but up here I've, I potted this during one of my earlier videos but this is just a fern leaf cactus and oh he's gonna take it for me are you gonna take it for me? No. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so I potted this into a no drainage vessel um, because it was super, super root bound and it was getting very, very dry. Um, I was forgetting to water it. So what I did instead was I put some leca and some pond in the bottom to act as a reservoir and then I just had the soil over top. And every time I water it, I just make sure the water is kind of half of the way through the leka, and then it just wicks everything up on its own and it, now it's super rooted again and all of that happened in a month so obviously it's a very effective system it's the same potting situation that i have for my alocasia fried egg right now which is also living its best life i think this one i got from my mom yeah i think my mom just gave this to me so i'm assuming she probably got it from home sense again because it looks very similar to one of my other home sense pots but it's just attached to the pedestal there so yeah okay i think that's it for this section so we're gonna move on again this is the uh fiddle leaf fig comes in a big basket this is from ikea uh, my mom gave me this plant and she bought me this planter as well i find when the plants get really big um using ceramic planters can be too expensive. So baskets are a nice, cheaper alternative that also look really pretty. Okay, so now we are in the elbow corner or the expensive corner, as my husband likes to call it. <laughs> this is the most expensive corner in the house probably. So this one's just another rain ceramics planter um, from the same collection as the ones that were previously shown, so that is what I have my Monstera Thai Constellation potted into. Uh, all of the other planters here though, they're all just like plain regular planters that you can find at the department store. So this one's from HomeSense, I believe this one's just a regular concrete planter. Um, down here is a planter that I got from a floral shop back in Victoria, so yeah, just very plain stuff. This one is a bigger version of the planter that I showed on my plant shelf. Um, another Monstera is in here, and I kind of like these ones because this is actually hollow in the bottom, so I don't have to wait for all the water to drain through before I can put it back in the pot, especially if I'm in a rush. I just water it, let it drain into the pot itself, and then come back later and empty it, and I don't have to worry about the plant sitting in some wet you know like having wet roots or whatnot but for this um this shelf here i just wanted to stick to neutral colors again so i wanted to stick to like whites and natural colors like this um, i even have like a little little cat thingy here which i don't really know what to pot into because of the awkward shape so it kind of just sits as decor for now but yeah just nice and neutral so that it doesn't look too too busy especially with all of the different patterns going on because everything is variegated so all of the busyness is just in the foliage and not so much on the planters themselves Thanks. sexy <laughs> here is um my big philodendron pastazanum silver there's a new leaf growing back here this is not really the most ideal spot for it because it's pretty pulled back from the window and I don't really have a grow light in this area so that's why all of the leaves are kind of like <laughs> leaning this way but whatever it'll be fine it's a very hardy and resilient plant let's just ignore this yellow leaf just don't look at that don't look at it <laughs> but it's in a big planter here this is again from HomeSense, so all those home goods stores are treasure troves for cute planters, especially in the summer and spring. That's when they have all of their planters, but I just watered this yesterday, so yeah, it's got lots of roots and 
just gonna put it back in and that's all I have to say about this one this is probably one of the larger plants in my collection I don't think I have too many super super big ones because the bigger they get the harder they are to manage unfortunately um, here is my philodendron glorious. I have two plants potted together. It is already outgrowing the pole which is low-key stressing me out because now I have to cut it again and the last time I cut it was very stressful but it's um I'm just gonna take it out here. It's very tall like really really tall. Ah. Yeah yeah so it can be very unwieldy so a little bit unstable especially when I water the pole the pole gets really heavy a little bit too heavy for the pot itself so I have it in a soup container like this because it needed to be in a deeper container so that I could bury the pole and I just have it in this um, square bubble planter that I got from Simon's again and I find that the square shape kind of just helps keep it a little bit stable too so even though it's a little bit top heavy from the pole at least the planter itself is uh, the weight is a little bit more evenly distributed or at least that's what I tell myself, but secretly I, I hope it never falls. <laughs> Although just watch, now that I've said that, it's gonna fall. Uh, jinx myself. Okay, we're just gonna put it back there. So it doesn't get a lot of light, because again, I don't have a grow light here, but it does get some light from that window, and that's probably why this new leaf is facing that way, because it senses that. But whatever, it is what it is. So these are the entryway plants. I probably will have to move them away from this spot come winter time because it's gonna get too cold. Every time we open the door, it's just gonna let in a big gust of cold air and they're just gonna get cold damaged. But um, this is a Nangara Tense. Oh, hi, Nico. <laughs> this is my Nangara Tense. And I have it in just a plain old planter up here. But in order to raise it up, I have it on another pedestal as well. So that kind of just helps maximize the space that I have on the little side table there. So that's the Nangra Tense. This is another Gloriosum and this one is in one of those clear planter boxes that I already showed um, earlier on my plant shelf. And this is the Soderoi bottom cutting and it's just in a pot from Ikea on a planter stand that I think is from Walmart. I'm not really sure but it just happened to fit and it kind of keeps it more stable too, especially when I hadn't cut it yet. It was super tall and it just kept like flopping over. So having the stand actually, for some reason, stabilized it. So that's why I have the stand, but now it's not really necessary because I've already cut the plant in half. So then we've got the um, anthuriums over here. So this is my Magnificum and this is the Crystal Black. They don't get a lot of light back here, but again, whatever, it's okay. So just some regular planters. Uh, they're both the exact same, but just different sizes. So this is a bigger one, that's a smaller one there. Um, and then this is the matching cat vase that I have, but in black. And I'm using this for my water propagation. So these are just some Hoya cuttings that I have rooting in some water at the moment, and I just put it in there. And um, yeah, and then that's it for here. So I think finally we can go to the red stick cabinet. Oh God, I'm, this is a lot. Okay, we'll open this one. So we'll start with this one because this is easy to reach. So this is another planter from Emmy Ceramics. So the same ceramicist that made those cute little uh, animal shaped planters on my plant shelf. So this is just a regular one, but I like the texture of it and I like the shape and it fits a three inch nursery pot perfectly. This one is another one from Aura Clay. So this is a bigger version of the same pot, except this one doesn't have flowers along the top there. So it's a little bit more plain, but um, I think the pink blush also complements the pink of this string of hearts really nicely. So in the Redsta, I don't really have all of them in plant pots because I feel like it's not really necessary. There's already a lot going on in here. And um, the Redsta is kind of like a transitional space anyway. So this is where I put plants that are kind of rooting or that I'm propagating because they need the higher humidity. So like, I mean, even here you can see it's just, you know, a regular plastic cup. And I just have it like this because this is a taller cup and it just lifts it up a little bit. And I have them in the uh, acrylic risers as well. This is my variegated Edinsonii. It's just in a regular Ikea planter. Oh, this leaf. It's dead. 
This one, I can't even remember where this is from. I think this is from a nursery. I think this might be from Vendula. I'm not too sure, but yeah, just a regular nursery. Another small pot, also from a nursery. This is from Garden Works back in BC. So it already came with that bamboo plant stand, which is really nice. So I just have that raised like that. Um, this one here, a pink princess that I potted directly into this planter from Three Feet Mudworks. So this is, uh, it's a lot prettier in natural lighting, but it's all shimmery and sparkly and has like subtle color variations, but I would say the majority of the color is pink, so I, that's why I have the pink princess in the pink planter. And I don't know why I decided to pot it directly into this. I think I was taking a bit of a risk there. Um, the pink princess did have some root rot, so I figured, eh, what more do I have to lose, right? Like if it rots, it rots, I'll just take some cuttings. But so far it's been doing okay. But unfortunately I did lose a bunch of the um, super variegated leaves. So like this leaf was all pink. That thing that I just took off was an all pink leaf and there was another all pink leaf that I lost. Um, and then the, recent, the most recent leaf is not very pink at all, which is, kind of sad now that I'm saying it out loud. And then everything else is just plain, plain pots. Yeah, so just some plain nursery pots again back here. And another plain pot that I got from a nursery. Um, I think the other cool thing that I can talk about in this cabinet is this planter. So I have magnetic hooks in here. So this hook can come off. So I just Ooh, that's loud. I just attach it right there. But this is a hanging planter and I can't remember the name of it, but it has like this leather strap and I got this one for free in exchange for a review. Um, the only thing I can say about this is it's cute, but a little precarious because of the rounded bottom of this pot there. I just feel like it's very much at risk of falling and tipping over. So we'll see how long I want to keep this plant in here, but right now I think it's pretty cute. I do have it potted directly into it as well because there's no way a nursery pot would be able to fit into this bowl simply because it's shaped like a bowl and not like your typical plant pot. But yeah, I just have that in here. Okay, and then the second Rudsta. Yeah, so this is in a little plastic shot glass. This is a Hoya Bertonier. I'm just gonna set it down. Um, this one is a seedling that I got from North Shore Tropicals. I think this is just a crystal mag and I have it in a cute little mug here that I got from the Forks Market here in Winnipeg. So again, it's meant to be used as a drinking cup, but I use it for plants because priorities. <laughs> uh, up here, so this one right here that I'm just gonna try my best to take out. So this one is another cute planter from Annie's Potteries from New York but in a different color, but the same theme. So it does have a, its own little saucer as well. Oh my God, this is getting hard. And then the Polynura just potted in a clear glass container there. I'm pretty sure it's meant for semi-hydro because it's got those two drainage holes drilled in already, but I'm just using it for, you know, soil. This is a variegated domesticum, just in a regular plant pot, also from HomeSense, and then just some clear glass vessels from the dollar store there. Uh, down here is my philodendron gigas, and this is meant to be a tumbler, so another drinking cup, and this is from Hand Pots as well. So I just have some plastic drinking cups into a ceramic drinking cup, and it works. Same thing, also from HomeSense. So this is uh, an Ace of Spades knockoff, I believe. I have one of my Anthurium seedlings in here. So just as an experiment, but I don't think this is a good environment for it because it's drying out too quickly. This is just uh, an old gold planter that I had lying around, but it's kind of rusty in the inside. So I don't really want to use it to have my plants in. So I have this Aglionema in here, but I just raise it up with a plastic um, sauce tray so that it doesn't touch the rusted sides. And then back there is just an old boba cup, so not much to see back there. And then over there is just another Ikea container. Oh, this one's a little bit hard to take out, so I'm just gonna get you to zoom in there. But that's just a little hedgehog planter, which 
I got, I think from a novelty store. Again, I can't really recall where I got that one from. Oh, no, I got it from Paboom in Victoria. So yeah, it's just a little hedgehog planter. It doesn't really fit a big plant, so I don't really know how, what I can put in there other than tiny little propagations. And then back here, also from Paboom. And then this one is from Vindula Farms. There's a little face on the other side, but I don't really like the face, so I just have it turned around so I see only the plain side. And I really only got this planter because I like the color of it. It's the same buff um, neutral color that I have on the other planters that I have on my plant shelf. And it's just got these cute little nubs on the side, so it just gives it a little bit of, you know, just makes it a little bit more unique, a little bit more special compared to a regular plain plant pot. So that's it for the Rudsta cabinet. Last one. Into the bathroom. <laughs> you know, actually looking at it, I don't think there's much I can talk about here because I just have like the dim sum containers there, which I've already talked about in another video. So if you guys want to know more about this setup, um, I'll just link the video. And oh, I guess this is the only thing I really want to talk about here. So this one here is another drinking cup from Emmy Ceramics. It's also from her second sale because I think there's another crack. Yeah, there's a very tiny crack in the bottom. So like really, it's still a perfect cup, but it's just a lot cheaper. So this one's a little bare and it fits a little three inch pot perfectly. And I have this pink princess cutting in some fluval stratum, which is looking dry. So I do need to water this as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This uh, over here is the New Guinea Ghost Hoya in an Ikea planter, so not much to say there. Um, and then over there is the varicosum cutting that I had cut in an older video that I just have in a dollar store glass container. So that pretty much wraps up my plant pot tour video. Collecting plant pots can be so much fun. It's almost like you're collecting outfits for your plants. I like to pot mine into plastic pots instead of directly into the planter so that I can easily switch out the plants if I need to as the plant grows and changes appearance. I have other pottery artists on my radar whose pieces I hope to add to my collection one day, but with such pieces being released in such small batches, getting my hands on one can be a bit tricky sometimes. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this also inspired you to start Start your own plant pot collection to complement your beautiful plants and I will see you in the next one. Bye!